Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. Now, I probably should have made this episode earlier, but I didn't think about it till now, so my bad. So, on today's episode, let's go over the sets that are coming out in 2021 and when those sets are coming out. Some of the release dates have been confirmed and some are just speculated on at this point. Regardless, let's go through each set and talk about what we know so far. So let's start things off by looking at the big picture. Obviously, the first set of the year, Kaldheim, has already come out. So again, yeah, I probably should have made this episode before that, but I didn't, so my bad. Anyways, also in the first half of the year, we are getting Time Spiral Remastered. And then in Q2, we're getting Strixhaven School of Mages. At some point during the second half of the year, we're getting Modern Horizons 2. And sometime during summer, which is Q3, we're getting Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Finally, in the fall for Q4, we're getting two sets with Innistrad Werewolves and Innistrad Vampires. Though those aren't actually the official final names of those sets yet. So overall, unless we get any other surprises during the year, we're getting seven sets in this year. That's a ton of sets, and it's a lot to go over, so let's break things down set by set. And of course, I'm going to skip Kaldheim because, yeah, that set's already out and spoiled. So let's start things off with Time Spiled Remastered, which has this lovely logo. Now, Time Spiled Remastered, we got somewhat of a sneak peek for already. If you haven't seen the episode on Gavin's Good Morning Magic channel, make sure you go check that out. But basically, one of the last images in that episode is this. So, Time Spiled Remastered, we already have a set date, which is going to be March 19th of 2021. According to the MTG Wiki, it's going to be a new way to experience the Time Spiral block, which was originally released from 2006 to 2007. This set is supposedly going to feature some fan favorites from Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, and Future Sight. Just like the original Time Spiral set, each pack is going to contain one time-shifted card. So those are going to be specific cards that are outside of the set that are time-shifted. Basically, they feature the original frame and a purple expansion symbol. And you can see that purple symbol right here on your screen. Also, the release promo slash buy box card is going to be Lotus Bloom, which you are also seeing on the screen, which has some amazing art. I believe that was the original promo version of the art, but correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Regardless, there are a ton of potential fantastic Commander reprints that might be coming in Time Spiral Remastered. I mean, Time Spiral was the block that gave us the Commander staple Harmonize, and it also gave us some much more expensive things like Pact of Negation, Urborg, and Damnation. So yeah, I can see Time Spiral Remastered being a very popular set. Next up, we've got Strixhaven, which is set to release on April 23rd, 2021. According to the MTG Wiki, Strixhaven is the most elite university in the multiverse. It features five colleges, which battle it out with their own takes on magic. So apparently Strixhaven is the name of a university, but it's on a new plane. Some of the magic community are making some comparisons to Harry Potter when it comes to this set. So Strixhaven is basically Hogwarts. So I imagine that we're going to see those five different colleges battle it out with different colors associated with each college. Now, how many colors are going to be associated with each college? I'm not sure. One thing that I believe has been confirmed, though, is that Strixhaven is going to have MDFCs, or otherwise known as modal dual face cards. So, like Zenikar Rising and Kaldheim, we're going to see a return of those kinds of cards. Seems like a pretty exciting set, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to be doing with it. Next up, though, let's talk about Modern Horizons 2. This is a follow-up to the very successful Modern Horizons, which came out back in 2019. Like that set, it's basically going to skip standard and introduce cards into older sets. That set shook up a lot of formats and had a lot of goodies for Commander. Now, I don't believe that the official release date has been confirmed yet, but June 13th is the date that I keep seeing on this. Again, it's not confirmed, but the original Modern Horizons came out on June 14, 2019, so it's probably going to be around then. Regardless, from the Wizards Play Network, we have gotten confirmation that the enemy fetch lands are going to be in this set. 
The enemy fetches include Verdant Canicum, Scalding Tar, Misty Rainforest, Arid Mesa, and Marsh Flats. Obviously, these are highly sought after cards, so if that is correct, then this set might be even more popular than the original Modern Horizons. And that set again was already incredibly popular, and let's go over some of the commander highlights from that set. When it comes to commanders, that set introduced the powerful and popular Urza Lord High Artificer, Yogmoth Rand Physician, and Morphon the Boundless. It also gave us the five new talismans like Talisman of Conviction, Creativity, and Hierarchy. It gave us the Force Cycle with some free spells like Force of Negation and Force of Vigor. And of course, it gave us the White Beast Within with Generous Gift. And it even gave us some incredibly popular lands like Prismatic Vista in the Horizon Land Cycle like Waterlog Grove. So again, I bet Modern Horizons 2 is going to be a huge hit continuing from where Modern Horizons left off. Next up, Magic is getting its very first set focused on Dungeons and Dragons with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. As a level 7 Forest Gnome Cleric, I'm pretty excited about this one. <laughs> Anyways, this set is set to release in Q3, which is going to be in the summer. This one is actually going to replace the core set for the year. So last year we got M21, which came out in July, so from what I found, this one's actually going to be coming out in July as well. Not sure if that's been officially confirmed, but it seems pretty solid. Anyways, it's going to be drawing on some of the classic themes of D&D, and it's going to include that mechanic that we saw in Zendikar Rising with Party. With this new set, hopefully that party mechanic can be fleshed out a little more and given more support. Your party consists of up to one of each cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. So apologies to any D&D druids out there, you didn't make the cut. But again, as a D&D nerd, I'm excited to see where they take this set. Now the final set that we're going to be going over is actually a two-parter with Innistrad Werewolves and Innistrad Vampires, although these set names are not finalized. The speculated name for the Werewolf set right now is Innistrad Midnight Hunt, and the speculated name for the Vampire set is Innistrad Crimson Vow. Again, those are just the speculated names though, and they are not yet confirmed. Regardless, I'm not really sure if we've ever seen a set quite like this before. A split set with two different releases focusing on two different creature types. The Werewolf set is projected to come out in September of 2021, and the Vampire is set in November of 2021. So we've got two sets coming out in back-to-back -back months, and yeah, that's gonna be a really busy time for me with all those quick takes, but it'll be fun. Now, many players see the original Innistrad as one of the greatest sets in Magic history. That was all the way back in 2011, but we've actually visited Innistrad one more time back in 2016 with Shadows over Innistrad. Now, unlike the original set, that one was not as well received. So hopefully these two new sets can help reclaim Innistrad's good name. But my biggest hope specifically for the Werewolf set is that we actually get a decent Werewolf Commander. That's right, Ulrich of the Crowlin Horde, you're no good. You're an absolute piece of garbage. <clears throat> Not sure why I did that accent, but anyways, hopefully we get something like an Immerwolf Commander, which would be fantastic. The Werewolf Tribe is definitely one that needs a lot of love. So with this focus set, I hope that Werewolves get a lot of goodies, including some great Commanders. And now that I've gone over the sense, let's take one more look at the release schedule, which you might have noticed that I've updated with some confirmed dates and some speculated dates. So Kaldheim already came out, and the next set that we're going to be seeing is Time Spiral Remaster, which comes out in March. After that, we've got Strixhaven, which comes out at the end of April. Then we've got Modern Horizons 2, which is probably going to come out on June 13th, but again, I don't believe that one's been officially confirmed for that date. Regardless, in July, we've got that Dungeons & Dragons set, which again replaces the core set for the year. And finally, at the end of the year, we've got two split sets with Innistrad Werewolves coming out in September and Innistrad Vampires coming out in November. So we've got a jam-packed year, and I'm incredibly excited to see what's to come. And again, when things get closer to the release dates, make sure that you tune into this channel for some quick takes on some exciting spoilers. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.